Welcome to Parenting Today's Teens, a daily podcast that provides stories, insights, and wisdom to help you gain a deeper relationship with your teen. On today's episode, Mark Gregston and Wayne Shepard talk about the importance of not missing any opportunities with your teen. Let's hear what they have to say. Mark, we're going to talk about missed opportunities. What do you mean by a missed opportunity? You know, a missed opportunity is something that we see within our family, and for some reason we get distracted, we don't see it, or perhaps we get too busy, and we just don't take advantage of the opportunity to make a change within our family so that it affects our kids. But you know what? Then it not only affects them, it affects who they marry, Mm -hmm. it affects their kids as well. Sometimes we get second chances and sometimes we don't. So it's important that we not miss them. It it is. You know, and I think that we have to almost be looking for those opportunities. I mean, I know that all of us are busy. There's not a person listening that isn't running somewhere right now going, okay, I've got to get something else done. Mm -hmm. And so we are so busy. Sometimes we miss the opportunities to have an impact on our child's life during the time that they are the most receptive to it. We've got to take advantage of it and almost learn to live without regrets, take advantage of the opportunity so we don't miss it. You know, Mark, I was just thinking, I thought I spent a lot of time on airplanes until I look at your schedule. You're all over yeah. the place all the time. Yeah, you know, I uh, they let me fly the plane sometimes now. <laughs> I'm on it so much. I mean, You know you're in trouble when the pilot knows your name, I mean, when you get on. And so, yeah, it is quite a bit. Where everybody knows your name. That's right. Except I didn't know one man's name that I was trying to meet. There was a fella in Longview, Texas that I thought, you know, I've got to meet this guy. I'm always raising money, talking to somebody about helping us expand our influence uh, to help more families. And I have looked for this guy for a long time. People have said, you need to get with him. You need to get with him. You need to get with him. And uh, I mean, they've said this for years. And so we're flying back from Dallas to Longview, Texas. And I am so worn out. I am so consumed with finishing up a manuscript to get another book out with writing down notes, with typing emails that I need to get out before I land and and get home that I didn't even recognize the man next to me. On the airplane. On the airplane, sitting right next to me. I mean, we were touching elbows the whole time. (laughs) The very man. Yeah, and and so I am going through a list of people I need to talk to. And uh, I'm just going down the list and, and checking this thing off. And we land in Longview, and this man says, well, that's my plane right over there. And I noticed the plane. It's the plane of the man that I need to be talking with and have wanted to meet for a long time. What I learned was this. I was so consumed with my own stuff that the very thing that I longed for, I missed the man was sitting right next right to me. under your nose. <laughs> right next to me, and I had the opportunity. I had an hour to talk to him. It's almost like God had designed this perfect opportunity for me to engage and offer something good to him in hopes to engage him to offer something good back to us, and I missed it. I mean, I walked to my car kicking myself, going, I, I can't believe that. I can't believe you did that. Wait a minute. I've done that, too. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we all have, haven't yeah, we? Yeah, we have. You know, I mean, if we look at even the time we have with our kids, we're all busy. We're all full of activity. We're all consumed with our own selfishness at time. I tell people all the time, if I have five minutes during the day that I'm not thinking about myself, it's a good day. <laughs> you know, and, and I, I mean, in... In my heart of hearts, I know that I'm always running 100 miles an hour, and I try to excuse it with my ADD, but the reality of it is I keep busy. I jump up in the morning. I think sleep's overrated. Um, I can't wait to get up in the morning and get going, but in the midst of accomplishing what I want to accomplish, I'm not sensitive to those people around me that may be hurting or going through a tough time or struggling or, or I don't even think about that. In pursuit of good, I probably miss some hardship and difficulty of those loved ones right around me. Dads, you love your teens, and you're doing everything to show them. But sometimes, it still doesn't feel like enough. You're busy and short on time, sacrificing a lot as it is. 
but you still feel like you run out of time for what really matters. A Devotional for Dads is the perfect book to help remind dads of life's biggest priorities and help them show their wives and kids how much they really matter. A Devotional for Dads is full of short, poignant, thought-provoking devotionals that give a biblical perspective of who a dad is supposed to be. It's more than just advice. It's a reminder of just how important dad's role really is and how much he matters. Get your copy of A Devotional for Dads at ParentingTeenResources.org, either for yourself or as a gift for the dad in your life who loves and cherishes his kids. All right, let's apply this to being the parent of a teenager. Absolutely. Uh, Our teens miss opportunities, but we miss opportunities with our teens, don't we? Uh, We do, and I think our activity kind of pulls us away from our kids so we don't get to spend the time to kind of take a read on them and try to figure out what is going on in their life. If you have a child that's in seventh and eighth grade, tell me what the hardest thing they've gone through the last six months is. Hmm. And most people go, Well, I have no idea. And I go, then you know what? You have missed the opportunity because opportunity knocks sometimes just once. And when it knocks, it is a child inviting somebody to come in to share wisdom as to how to get through this difficult time. And if we aren't there to answer that knock, then we miss the opportunity. But here's the thing. Either my child veers off in a direction where she lives or he lives in that hurt and difficulty or they go to somebody else to get wisdom. And so the connection that they long for is made elsewhere other than what I really long for with them that I've missed in in the pursuit of my stuff rather than them. Some of the clues will come directly from our teens, and sometimes it takes another person kind of letting us know, hey, have you noticed What's going on with your teen? Maybe a youth pastor or a teacher? Or... Yeah, yeah, I think it does take that sometimes. And I think we're called to tell other people um, that, hey, this is what I see going on. I've done that a lot and I've offended a lot of people that I'll just write them a note and say, hey, I see some things here that concern me, you know, and it may not be that big of a deal, but this is what I see. And I do that because people do that to me. I mean, people have told me before, You know, the way you engaged with your wife yesterday was not good. Hmm. I mean, you made a comment that was, I can just see that it's pretty hurtful. And I looked and I went, I had no idea. Hmm. Well, you know what? I really didn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, me being the buffoon I am, (laughs) it just kind of comes naturally for me. We're often blind to our own faults, aren't we? And and my my point is, is that all of this comes pretty natural. We miss out. We don't recognize things. We don't... We don't, you know, applaud the accomplishments because we're not so sure what they have accomplished. We, we don't understand about the conflicts they're involved in. We don't see their hurts and struggles. We don't know what their difficulties are. And I, I think sometimes if we sat and said, you know what, I'm going to engage with my child and give them some opportunity, whether that be in the morning at a special time at dinner following that time at nine o'clock at night when they're doing homework, when they get up and need a ride to school, whatever those times are, moms and dads, you've got to be intentional and stop the activity. You know, I tell parents all the time, turn off your phone and maybe your child will turn off (laughs) their phone. I mean, my wife looks at me all the time and says of my Blackberry, put that thing down. You too. (laughs) Yeah. And I go, uh, and I wonder sometimes if I'm missing an opportunity with my wife. Yeah. And if I had kids at home, I'd miss that. You have to shut it down. Turn it off. Mm-hmm. Turn off the TV. Sit around and do something intentional. So is the remedy uh, maybe asking questions of our teens, uh, kind of probing a little bit? I think it's always asking questions. I, it may be saying, hey, what's, what do you think is the greatest struggle among teens today? What do you struggle with the most? What's been the biggest challenge you've had this past week? I mean, these are no yes, no answers. Ask open-ended questions. Open-ended questions and, and always be moving toward them. When I ask a question, what they hear is that I'm valuing their input. And don't ask the question so that you get the opportunity to share your opinion. Don't share your opinion unless they ask you. But ask it in an open-ended way that engages in discussion. For it's discussion now as adolescents how they're going to learn. It's not going to be through lecture. You know, when you stop and think about it, those missed opportunities, I mean, they are so important, so strategic for your family. They are. You know, if you see difficulties or struggles within your child, 
and you see them happening now, there may be the thought, well, I'm just going to let them deal with that when they go off to college or when they get married. You know what? That's how generational sin moves on to the next generation. And so it may be that the opportunity that you have before you is to stop a pattern of thinking or a pattern of living. Stop it now so that it doesn't continue. Your investment in your child will make a great difference in the life of your grandchildren. Thanks for listening to Parenting Today's Teens. For more information, visit parentingtodaysteens.org. And to learn more about Heartlight, visit heartlightministries.org. If this podcast has been helpful to your family, please share it or give us a quick rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Of course, you can listen to Parenting Today's Teens wherever you listen to podcasts. Join us tomorrow for another great episode. We'll talk to you then.